Thank you very much for those that are able to make it here in person and those on a virtual recording. And of course, those watching the recording afterwards. Uh, thank you all for coming to our, what is this, November, uh, November uh, HR Council meeting. And uh, well, we have one more uh, in December. It, obviously, this was shifted to get away from the holidays to the same thing with December, so you'll get notices on that. But we're very happy to have Claire Eastman, Director of Corporate and Community Engagement with Life Care Alliance, here today, talk to us today about uh, volunteering and corporate engagement in Marion County. And uh, it's a topic that I think, again, speaks to sort of what we, we talked about at last month's meeting. We're all trying to retain workforce and give them reasons to want to continue to, to work at your location. And volunteering has a big part to play in that. And Life Care is a great partner uh, in terms of uh, having your, your employees volunteer and uh, engage and how that can help um, uh, with that engagement serving members of the community while also retaining your workforce. Uh, so with that, I'll have Claire start us off. Well, thank you. Thank you for the invite. Really appreciate coming here and talking to all of you. I want to apologize for two things in advance. One, I'm getting over a cold. Uh, most of it happened last week. Last week, I lost my voice for four days. Uh, my husband was very happy about that, um, but at least it's a little bit back now. The second thing is I and in middle age, and I decided I don't want to feel that way, so I decided to get Invisalign on Monday. So I'm still trying to learn how to talk through that. So apologize, I will try to be as succinct as possible. <clears throat> anyway, um, what I'm going to do today, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview about me, um, how I came to this position, um, a little bit about Life Care Alliance, and I decided to start with what we are as a company before going into the corporate engagement, because as a um, a perfect example of when I introduced myself to Alan, he was like, so who do you work for, Life Care Alliance? And he gave me that, what do you do? I said, Meals on Wheels. Oh, yeah. So everybody knows us as Meals on Wheels. They don't know all the other things that we do. So I figured if I can give you some of that, a little bit of an explanation first, and then talk about how volunteers help us, and then kind of how um, we think volunteers can help you guys. Um, that's kind of the, the topic of my presentation. So first, a little bit about me. I am a professional volunteer at heart. Um, I volunteered as a young kid. Um, when I lost my job in 2009, I used to work for uh, NetJets Aviation. And uh, we came under a big uh, reduction in force. I lost my job and I said, I'm gonna go be a leader in nonprofit. So I went to OSU for a uh, nonprofit leadership. And um, through that, um, it took, I don't know, a year or so, but money was starting to, Dwindle down. I was the sole owner, or the sole breadwinner in the family. So after a year, Nationwide Insurance came knocking on my door, and I said, "I don't want to sell insurance. I don't like insurance. It's boring. I don't want to do anything with that." But they had a huge philanthropic arm, and I said, "I can get involved with a company that's really committed to the community." So I said, "I'm going to go work for them because then, in some fashion, maybe I can go work with the foundation, work with their corporate citizenship group, and that's kind of how I started." And in October, no, September of 2011, they had a big United Way day um, where they were trying to raise money for United Way. And so they had a day where we could all go volunteer at an agency. And my team decided it was Life Care Alliance. And so we delivered Meals on Wheels. I thought, this is amazing. Um, this is really good. This is something I can get behind. And my kids were six, eight, and nine at the time. And I'm like, I need to get them more involved in something. And this was something that um, kids younger than 16 could volunteer with because they didn't have to have all those um, just mandates of being like in a warehouse or something. So we started that um, and through my 10 years at Nationwide Insurance, I got more and more involved with, um, with Life Care Alliance. And I'll talk a little bit about that when I get to the last section. But um, this job came open um, in, uh, right in February of 2020, right before COVID hit. And I thought that's a great time to make a job change quit my corporate job and go work in nonprofit. So in April of 2020, I started working here. So I've been the director of um, corporate and community engagement since April of 2020. Um, my family still volunteers with us. My husband still volunteers. And now I get to do this for a living. I say it's um, not my occupation, it's my occupation. So um, I, I feel very, very fortunate to be here. <clears throat> so here, what is here? So I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of what we are because not very many people know us other than Meals on Wheels. So you go to our website, lifecarealliance.org, 
this will be one of the landing pages that you'll see. And you can go through the top and see all about our programs. I'll talk about some of them today. I won't talk about all of them. Um, and then, but our whole mission is really to keep people in their homes where they want to be. Um, because if you think about um, senior citizens, they don't want to go to a, a nursing home. They want to be at home. They want to be at home with their pets. They want people to come visit them. So our goal and every program that we offer is focused on that effort. So a little bit about our history. We were farmed in 1898 by Catherine Nelson Black, who was the wife of the mayor of Columbus, Samuel Black. And so back in the time when women couldn't even vote, she and a bunch of people got on a train to Chicago and learned all about kind of this new district nursing association where they bring healthcare and nursing to a community. And so they started focusing on nursing and um, how do we keep the community healthy. Um, that then also expanded in the early 1900s to look at child mortality. So we had what was called baby camps where um, they, it's basically like a daycare, but like an all day care, six days a week while the parents work. And it really focused on child mortality, which I think, I don't remember the stats off the top of my head, but it was like one in 150 back to one to 100, 1500 by the time they were done. It really reduced the, the um, infant mortality rates. Um, as they started and kept going with this, they brought in uh, nutritionists, wellness centers, um, and then the, our flagship enterprise, Meals on Wheels, started out of one of the Ohio State dorms in 1973. So a little bit, I'm going to choose four of our programs. Um, three of these programs that I'm talking about, we actually do here in Marion County. One of them is not, but it's still, I figured out to talk about it. So Meals on Wheels is our flagship program. Um, group and it's the second oldest Meals on Wheels program in the United States. Um, we are the only one right now uh, due to COVID um, in a major market that has no waiting list. So that's really due to our donors and our volunteers because our volunteers help defray the cost of, of what we do. Um, and we don't get paid a lot of money for the food. So if you think about having to buy the food, produce the food, package it, deliver it, um, we couldn't do that if we didn't have volunteers to be able to help us with that. We do home delivered meals daily in five counties. So um, Madison, Marion, Logan, Champaign, and Franklin. So Franklin is the only one where we deliver seven days a week. The other four we deliver five days a week. And then um, on one of those days, we provide food extra for over the weekend for our clients. And all of our meals are nutritionally balanced. They're low in sodium, fat, sugar. Um, so we, we have a dietitian on that site that really um, focuses on our meals and makes sure that they're healthy for everybody. Oh, and we do have lots of different meals, right? So if you're a vegetarian or maybe you had teeth work done and you can't chew anything, we'll provide you puree meals. But we try and be accommodated that way. All right, the Columbus Cancer Clinic. Um, this also was started by Catherine Nelson Black many years ago, and in 2005, merged back into Life Care Alliance, and it is the um, only free cancer clinic in the state of Ohio. So we do a lot of mammograms, colon screenings, head-to-toe cancer screens. Um, I think out of all the counties in Ohio, we have we pull from 44 different counties for people to come in. The mammogram machine that we have is at the art, the same one that the Wexner Center has. And so... We take anybody, regardless of their ability to pay, if you happen to have insurance, we'll bill your insurance, but if you don't, we'll still take you. And then um, if you happen to be diagnosed with cancer and um, you're undergoing active cancer treatment and you're in a low income status, we will provide groceries to you. So we have a groceries to go pantry where we provide uh, two weeks worth of groceries twice a month to feed your whole family. So it's not just the person that's going on to cancer, but the whole family, because if we have pediatric cancer clients. And so if you think about that from um, a parent's perspective, maybe a parent has to take off of work to be able to do it. They don't have the income coming in. So it really brings just a little bit of stability to the family. Help at home. So um, this is the one that we don't have in Marion County at the moment, but it's where we provide um, health care um, services to our clients where we'll go into your home. We, uh, if you need help bathing or dressing or doing your hair, 
or with like household chores, such as uh, paying your bills or changing your bed sheets and doing some laundry, will come in and will help you out with that. I mean, this is another one of those things that goes to keeping people in their homes. If you don't have family around and you can't do the stuff for yourself, who else can do it for you? Do you have a question? Why, why is that section of life? Why mm -hmm. your life's <clears throat> And I think the only reason why this isn't in Marion right now is due to the distance. Because all of our home health aides right now are all based out of Columbus and the travel up here. But I think that if that's something where we could expand it from a, a money perspective and a staffing perspective, I will say it's been very, very challenging to keep the staff in even <coughs> Franklin County right now. It's, it's, staff, it's high staff. turnover. Is that staff volunteer staff? Or is no, th this is not volunteer staff. We do have some volunteers that will go in and um, do some grocery shopping and kind of have some conversations with them. But most of the staff is trained. They have to go through 20 hours of training every year um, and to keep up continual annual training. Um, it's, it's pretty rigorous, yeah. more so than a volunteer. Okay. And then Central Ohio Diabetes Association. And then most recently, we just merged with Diabetes State. And those are the last two free diabetes um, education groups in Ohio. And this is not necessarily focused on services, but more on education. So um, if you have a, um, a young adult who has just been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, they're likely the only kid in their school that has type 1 diabetes. So they may be um, uncomfortable with all their friends get to go to lunch and they have to go to the nurse and test their blood before they can even eat. So um, what we do is we offer um, summer camps. It's a two or three week um, sleepaway camp where they get to be with other students of their own um, type one diabetes status. And they get to um, exchange stories and learn how to test their blood sugar and learn how to give themselves insulin in a safe environment. And that also translates to keeping people in their homes because as you get older, type two diabetes starts to become an issue. And so um, we can use that education to help them understand how to eat and how to exercise a little bit um, and keep yourself off of insulin if at all possible. So we have a lot of other services that are going on. I, I don't wanna go into detail on all these, but one thing I will mention, because it is something that my group manages is our senior pet care program. So that's a program where um, we noticed that some of our families that received our meals, living alone, had companions. They had their companion pets, kept them comfortable. We're feeding their meals to their pets because if they can't go out to get their own food, how can they get pet food for their pets? So that's not good for the adult who needs the food, the sustenance. It's not good for the pet who's not being fed people food. So we started partnering with uh, the Middle Ohio Food Bank and Walmart. So they will give us, um, like Walmart, if you rip a bag or if you return it because your pet doesn't like the food, rather than throwing it away, which is what they used to do, they'll bundle it up and they'll ship it to us. And we'll get seven pounds of food every three months or so. And it's gonna be the big 50 pound bags. Um, so it's not something a senior can carry. So we have volunteers that come in and proportion it down into smaller, meaningful sizes. And then we have a group of volunteers that do almost like a Meals on Wheels route, but it's for pet food, we call it Animals. And so they deliver um, pet food to our seniors um, so that they can keep their, their um, pets with them. So we provide dog food, cat food, cat litter. Sometimes we'll get bird seed, um, but it's mostly dogs and cats that we support. People donate directly. People do donate directly to us. We have an Amazon wish list. Um, we um, that a lot of people that like if their cats, pets, uh, their pets pass away um, and they don't have the food, they don't know where to go, they'll bring it back to us. Um, sometimes we have um, a couple companies right now during the holidays that are doing pet food drops for us um, as a way for us to be able to, to give a little bit extra to our, our clients. All right, so, um, what time is it? Something, this is about a six minute video if we can play it. I think it's just gonna, a lot of this focuses on Franklin County, but there's some really good client stories in there from a Columbus Cancer Clinic perspective and some of our older clients, one of these ladies is 101. And I wanna be like her when you see her, it's amazing. So I think it might give you just a little bit of a- Some of your time is actually spent writing. Uh, if it's done work, I don't know. 
I can send the link out afterwards and if people are interested, they can watch it afterwards. Now there is a huge increase in demand for help making sure seniors get a good meal. But there's also concern about exposing them to COVID-19. Organizers say those with compromised immune systems and seniors are afraid to leave their homes. Senior citizens are most at risk for coronavirus, so people are doing everything they can to keep them safe. The Live Care Alliance has been working hard, real hard, to support the Central Ohio community in many ways, including meeting the food demand. Staff at Life Care Alliance say they get about 50 new clients per day. Their drive through lunches well, they've been a lifesaver for so many people during this pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic brought many challenges to Life Care Alliance. During the pandemic, the demand for home delivered meals increased by 68%, and Life Care Alliance saw a 54% increase in clients in need of services overall. And these numbers have not yet decreased. Yeah, of course, COVID put us in the house and we thank goodness we have a house. Uh, we've been stuck in it uh, right along here and haven't had a chance to get out yet. I, I stay home all the time, you know. I don't get to go out to, you know, I can't go out walking nothing because of the, uh, you know, the way my uh, body is. We live very um, below the poverty line, our yeah. family does. So since COVID hit, uh, Jesse's been home mm -hmm. because he lives with us and with Katie's condition, we couldn't risk any illness. And I tell people when I see them, especially when they're handicapped or at a certain age, you can get the service. Despite the unprecedented demand for services, Life Care Alliance was able to serve all individuals in need without a waiting list. This is not the norm. Around the country, most major metropolitan areas have had to establish, expand, and in some cases double or triple their client waiting lists despite receiving CARES Act funding for relief. How was Life Care Alliance able to cover the costs beyond the CARES Act funding? The answer is simple, you. Because of the support of local foundations, community partners, individual donors, and volunteers, Life Care Alliance was able to implement COVID protocols to keep staff, volunteers, and clients safe, pivot essential services, and serve all qualified individuals in need. It's a wonderful system for seniors. I just feel so enriched. It's something that I just, I get up and I just tune my time. I set my clock sometimes, my alarm, so that I'm sure I'm presentable and ready for the door. Because of you, we were able to shift our dining center operations to drive through grab and go lunches. The Columbus Cancer Clinic received a separate entrance to reduce unnecessary contact for patients, and the Groceries to Go Food Pantry began delivering groceries directly to clients with active cancer and their families. I need some kind of food to build my immune system up so I can fight the cancer, you know, medication, rides, and stuff like that, which if it wasn't for them, I, you know, I'd be dead by now, I think. I would say that it is literally life-changing and life-saving. For someone to be able to support someone they don't know by, you know, giving money, giving food, uh, volunteering, it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Can literally save a life. Mm -hmm. We also were able to transform Carrie's Cafe and the newly rebranded Levy Events Center into a distribution hub for the overflow of frozen meals as well as a bundling and delivery hub 
for the Senior Farmers Market Program that takes place every summer. Our work continues. Even with the distribution of the COVID vaccine, the demand for Meals on Wheels and other essential services from Life Care Alliance has not dropped. Many individuals in the Central Ohio community remain isolated, out of work, or have medical conditions that require them to need some assistance to remain safe and independent in their own homes. Life Care Alliance can only continue to provide health, wellness, and support services with your help. Thank you for joining us in our mission to nourish the human spirit and for joining us in our Founders' vision, which is to take care of those nobody else pays any attention to. Tell the donors we appreciate very much, and it's an, this has become an integral part of our life. Thank you for supporting Life Care Alliance. Thank you so much for supporting Life Care Alliance. Thank you for supporting Life Care Alliance. Thank you all for all that you do to support Life Care Alliance. If you're trying to lose belly fat, stop doing cardio. This sounds kind of backwards, right? Well, believe me, it's actually true. The truth is that Hollywood... Can they still hear me? Okay. Right. Or they, they should be able to hear you. Now. All right. So I know that was focused a lot on Franklin client, County clients, but to me, I think it was interesting to show because before I started, I did not have a good idea of what our client base looked like and have a face to um, who some of these people are. That lady, that's 101. Um, just amazing that we can still continue to keep her um, in her house with her health at home and things like that. So just a little bit of an overview about us. So now I wanted to pivot, unless anyone has any questions, I wanted to kind of pivot a little bit to what Life Care Alliance looks like in Marion County. So kind of what we do here to support you guys. So we do have uh, Meals on Wheels. Um, the original Marion Meals on Wheels program um, was founded out of um, the Older Americans Act, um, and it was a community action agency. Um, but the end of 2012, they were going out of business because the amount of money it cost to produce and deliver the meals was more than they were getting in funding. And it was because all their drivers and delivery staff were uh, paid drivers. Our, our model is different. We try and go for volunteers <clears throat> to reduce that. So in January of 2013, we stepped in, we were asked to do it, and it was really more so um, because of our capacity. We had the buildings that already were producing food. We had um, the relationships with the food providers. So as Chuck likes to say, Chuck's our CEO, my broccoli is cheaper than your broccoli, right? So if we can buy more broccoli at a cheaper spot, then we can keep the cost down lower and then we can take on more. He also talks about how, um, you know, when the Columbus Cancer Clinic and Diabetes State and then uh, Central Ohio Diabetes Association all came with under us, um, it really helps cut down on the overhead of an administration staff. So there's only one CEO, there's only one CFO, there's only one volunteer team. Um, so we can keep our costs more minimal and service more people and then also provide broader services to everybody through what we provide. So in Marion County, the two biggest things that we do are Meals on Wheels, um, where we have seven weekly routes that pick up um, from Marion County Senior Center, and Congregate Dining Centers, which is basically um, their cafes style, um, and it's where people come in from outside nursing homes and senior centers, and they'll come in and congregate for a meal. Um, we did have to um, kind of change that and pivot that um, during COVID. Um, so a little bit of statistics from a Meals on Wheels perspective. 2020, we had 279 clients and we delivered a little over 38,000 meals. Um, so, so far in 2021, we are close to that or in terms of meals. Our client numbers have gone down, um, but the number of meals are starting to go up a little bit. Um, mostly that's because um, during COVID, people uh, lost their support system. So where they may have only been getting one meal a day, Maybe now they're getting two meals a day. So that's why some of the meals have gone up. Um, we talk a lot about, um, we talk a little bit about the why volunteers are so important. Sometimes our clients and volunteers are the only people that they see that day. Um, so it uh, really helps with the client contact and um, making them feel that they are not alone. 
and then um, talks there a little bit about the age of some of our population here in the area. <laughs> Um, so the number of clients has gone up 54% um, overall. Um, so I'm a little surprised to see Marion numbers go down, um, but it may have been just because you're a more close knit community and maybe you have uh, family members that live here that are taking care of everybody. Whereas maybe in Columbus, people are more spread out. That's the only thing I would say to that. A lot of the churches step up. Mm -hmm. That is true. I know um, there was uh, the last time we were here in October, right after that, I think the next day was like some make a difference day on that Saturday, October 23rd. And there was a lot of churches that were getting together and filling lunches and I think to, to deliver. So I think that's a, a fair point. And so dining centers. Um, so in 2020, with COVID coming in, we had to close a lot of our dining centers because they were considered restaurants. So we turned to a um, kind of a grab-and-go method where we provided drive-throughs. We still provided meals and box lunches and people came and drove through and picked them up. So it was our way of still being able to provide uh, these meals to our clients. Some staff there. Um, we had them at the Marion County Senior Center and at Marion Towers. And so then kind of talking through some of the other things that we provide. We don't just do Meals on Wheels and Congregate, but we do also provide some of these other services to uh, clients in Marion. So Columbus Cancer Clinic, um, people can come down here, those are things we talked about pet food. And Franz is something we do during the summer where we provide Franz to uh, seniors to kind of keep the temperatures down. All right, so impact of volunteers. So um, some of the things that you saw on that uh, video there about how our meal rate went up to about 65% of weekly meals and it has not dropped, um, which means that we are delivering more meals on a consistent basis. Um, our numbers of routes have not really increased. And so what that is the length of the routes have increased. And the reason being that is that um, we don't have enough volunteers so if uh, you think about a route generally has about uh, like a route here in Marion um, has 20 to 22 days a month, Monday through Friday that we're delivering. So that's 20 to 22 volunteers that you need every single month. So if you split a route to make it smaller, you're gonna need 40 to 44 volunteers. So that's one of the reasons why we're here, right? So if we can start to engage with different corporate partners and uh, find some interesting, uh, Partnerships there, maybe we can split some of these routes and uh, get more people to help do more work. Um, so the impact, um, we talked, Chuck was talking about how um, Life Care Alliance accepts everyone in, in need. We have no waiting lists. If you went to Toledo or Cleveland or Cincinnati right now and wanted to get Meals on Meals, there'd be at least 1,500 people in front of you. So you would be waiting once, if not multiple months or a year to, to receive meals on meals for the first time. Um, each route that we have by volunteer, each day, well, we estimate costs about $50 to deliver a meal, uh, a, a route. So over the course of the year, across all of our routes, that's close to $2 million, that if we had everybody um, as volunteers being able to deliver that, all that money would go back into the programs to be able to produce meals cheaper, faster, and take on more clients. And then um, the $80,000 by AARP, that number talks about um, keeping people out of uh, um, senior nursing homes. Any questions so far before I get to kind of the summary? I wanted to just kind of set the stage of kind of what we do because while my end goal would love to have all of you come volunteer with us, um, I know that what we do may not resonate with everyone's company. So, but I am huge about um, volunteering. So I want to talk a little bit about the benefits of it um, and maybe some of the ways that I have seen it implemented in other companies as well, um, because that might help uh, brainstorm with you about how you can get your staff involved as well and why, because there is benefits to the staff business and recruiting in your competitive advantage. So, so <coughs> excuse me, some ways that why this is a um, benefit for your staff. 
I think a lot of this is really common sense. So I don't feel like me standing up here is really going to a lot of things that people haven't really, don't really know in their gut, but it fosters some good thoughts. I don't know how, um, you know, it really provides an outlet for social responsibility with the community. Um, this individual capacity to volunteer his or her service. So um, I volunteer on my own, but to be able to volunteer my time as part of my work um, was amazing because it felt like my work then felt that what I felt was important was important to them as well. Um, this whole uh, valuable incentive time off program. When I worked at Nationwide Insurance, I talked about how I went there because it had that huge philanthropic arm and it had a huge corporate citizenship group where they, um, had, it was pretty, pretty structured and they provided um, one half day of PTO for every 25 hours of volunteer time that you provided at a qualified um, 501c3. So I got hooked up with Life Care Alliance. So for every route, which is about two or three hours in length that I did on the weekends, after I'd done that for 25 hours, I got a, a you know, half day of PTO, which is not a ton. But to me, that was a great way um, as a mother to be able to go run errands or do whatever I needed to do in my life. And it showed that the company was supporting our community. Um, the, providing access and quality time to company leaders. Um, to me, that's a huge one because um, at Nation, and I, I'm going to use Nationwide just as a lot of examples, just because that's my history. Um, they own, and this was prior to COVID because they had to take a step back, um, but they own three or four routes that they delivered Monday through Friday. And they had um, company coordinators that would then have a cadre of volunteers and they would say, okay, who's gonna volunteer Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week. And we all kind of volunteer different days. We could sign up based upon our schedule. If we couldn't do it on a day we signed up, someone else could plug in for us. Um, and it was a way for us to partner with other people in our community. So I wouldn't always go by myself. I would go with a team member or maybe even somebody else that I didn't know and I would get to learn more people in the company. One of the other things that they did, they didn't just do Meals on Wheels. Um, they also did a lot of other fundraising. So um, I remember one of the things that they did was a rock, paper, scissors competition. And you had to pay a $20 entrance fee or $10 or something to join this. And then you're doing rock, paper, scissors with against the leaders of the company. <clears throat> the money there that they raised went to the Middle Ohio Food Bank. All right, so that's a way that your staff can get involved, it gives them access to the leaders. And actually through that rock, paper, scissors competition is why I'm here today. Because one of the leaders um, of the executives um, was on the board of Life Care Alliance. He was playing rock, paper, scissors, and he was wearing jeans um, because, and I thought a leader that like lives the mission of, of nationwide insurance and they're dressing down because it's a dress down day and they're approachable and I can go talk to them. And I said, hey, you're on the board of Life Care Alliance. Let me learn more about it. And he got me hooked up. And those steps are what got me here today. And it's all because of that rock, paper, scissors competition. So it was, um, to me, just a, a, it was really boosted my morale and kept me there for 10 years, even though I didn't like insurance. Yeah. I won um, a $200 Amazon gift card. So I came in third place out of everybody. But I was against the president of our property and casualty group. Yeah, one, two, uh, three, go. Oh, see you. Ah, 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 yes, I'm the winner. Champion. <laughs> he, he did paper. I got scissors. <laughs> well, um, thank you. Not everyone does the, the Zoom or Well, I mean, they're, they can't see them, right? Sure. Right. Um, okay, so how it helps your business. Um, company reputation and public credibility. If you think about Nationwide, again, their Nationwide Foundation. Now they have the Nationwide Children's Hospital. Their name is on everything. The um, the in October the marathon, right? The the marathon and all that money. Um, they are not known just for insurance, but they are also known for their public philanthropy. Um, I'm not a person. Well, I am now, but I didn't used to be a person that gave money, right? I used to give my time, but time is just as valuable. And if you think about um, kind of what we do, we translate volunteer time into money. So when we say the money that we saved is roughly $25 an hour that volunteers provide to us. So um, if you are donating money or if your company is donating time, 
you're really giving back to your community and strengthening your community and it really gives you something that you want that recruiting and retaining quality workforce i mean that's the reason why i worked for nationwide in the first place the only reason why i went there was because they had that philanthropic part um the workforce loyalty and less turnover i have a lot of friends that have worked at nationwide for a long time and it's a really good company uh, i'm not going to squash in them they they do a lot of good things and um but a lot of the reasons why people are there is just because of that engagement and that they feel that the company cares about them as a person and what they care about, not just about making money for the company. Um, oh, the skill-based volunteer services is an interesting story. So a lot of the things that we do, Meals on Wheels, Columbus Cancer Clinic, Rushers to Go Pantry, you can work in our kitchen, um, you can work bag to pet food. Um, but we also have some skill-based volunteers. We worked with DHL last year in our pet food room. It's a massive room, probably about four times, maybe six times the size of this. And it's where we have all of our pet food and all of our big donations that we get. Um, we'll get wheelchairs and stand-up commodes and things like that so we can give them to our clients and we have them all stored in this room. And it was just all on the floor. And it was all, you had to move one pallet to get to a third pallet over there. And we spent most of our time logistically moving things around to get to something. And so we said to DHL, do you have a logistics expert that can come in and donate your time and help us reorganize this? So they came in and um, looked at how we organized it. They made some recommendations for installing some pallet racks so we can get things off the floor and use some of the vertical space. Um, we had, did have one set of pallet racks, um, but they told us how we needed to reorganize it to maximize use. And so that's something that I think companies don't often think about is how can I use my skills um, to be able to donate my time. So that way DHL didn't deliver a route. They probably won't ever deliver a route, but they use their time um, to kind of help us in that capacity. And they won one of our uh, corporate volunteer awards for it. So it was pretty cool. Um, recruiting and competitive advantage. So there was a presentation now, Marion and Delaware partner a lot. So um, I don't know if it's through the Chamber of Commerce or through United Way or something, but there was a presentation that came out <clears throat> several months ago. And it was um, when Marion, the Marion Connect was being announced. That, that's what it's called, right? Marion Connect, the, your website with the volunteers. Yeah. Oh, get connected, yes. Yeah. So there was an email that came out with someone had talked about that and announcing it. And there was also this presentation from the Delaware County Foundation all about the different generations and um, you know, baby boomers and traditionalists. And it was really, really fascinating. I'm happy to send this if somebody wants to uh, lead it. But um, I'm interested in, I have five kids ages 16 through 20 and it's trying to guide them on what they want to do going on in, um, you know, in the future. And so it talks here about Gen Z we, uh, no, let's see here. Millennials, 1981 to 2000, their biggest characteristic is live and then work, and that they are achievement oriented and focused on social change, right? So they are not working to live like I am, right? I held a job ever since I was 15, except for that one year when I lost my job, right? So I was always focused on a job and I defined myself by that. My kids don't. My son, who was a junior in college, did not work last summer because he wanted to enjoy the summer. Right, so now he's not having fun going out because he doesn't have money, but <laughs> don't come looking at me. But you know, it's that whole live and work and they want to be able to have that um, impact, that whole social change impact. Um, the same thing with Generation Z, which is 2001 to 2020, is that they are all driven by um, individuality, creativity, um, personalization, um, they have progressive work views. So if you are looking to, um, if you have an elderly workforce, the, the baby boomers are starting to retire and you want to recruit that new vision and um, the thoughts, you're going to have to give them something that makes them want to come to you. And so a lot of that will be so focused on how they can do well for their community. So that's why it's going to be important for that. Um, that, the, the, that presentation, yeah. I, I figured out what it was for. Uh, that is actually on a YouTube channel, on, on the Marinara YouTube channel. That's our nonprofit executive council's last month's speaker presentation okay. with Delaware Community Foundation okay. as the uh, as presenter. For that one. So okay. If anyone's interested in seeing that, it's, it's available on our YouTube channel. Yeah, it was 
it was great. Um, I've referred to this a couple of times because it's just um, interesting to think about, even from our perspective, right? A lot of our volunteers are retirees, um, which is great until you get to the winter time and they um, are concerned about the winter and that they have arthritis or something like that. Um, so how do we focus on getting um, youth coming up? And so some of the ways that we're doing that is through corporate recruitment and how do we get corporations uh, working with us and also through school. So we have Eve here through Crystal Ray. He is our intern um, this year and he has been um, working a lot, helping us with presentations like this and helping us on the administrative side. We also have two other interns, actually four other interns now, three of them that work in our groceries to go pantry and one that works in our kitchen. Um, our Crystal Ray intern last year who worked in our kitchen decided to stay on and work through the summer with us as an employment. So it's a way to get um, some of those youth involved. We also work with a lot of elementary school and middle school and high schools where um, they have adopted a route. They have a parent volunteer that is the coordinator and then they work with other parents. And so then the parents will come and take their kid out of school at lunchtime the two of them will go deliver the route and come back and the kid will go back to school. And so it's just a good way to get the kids involved. My kids now, they're 16, 18, and, and 20, um, and they um, deliver routes on their own sometimes. Um, during how, Sometimes it's their voluntold. Hey, I have a route today. It needs to be done. You can sign up for it. Um, and But sometimes it's just, hey, I don't have anything going on. Do you need help? And so it's, um, to me, it's just a good way from a company perspective to build that growing workforce. And those grants and those internship uh, or shadowing opportunities, are those available in Union County as well? The... Yeah, so from a route perspective, Meals on Wheels route perspective, we do have seven routes um, that are picked up at the senior center. Um, if our memory serves, we have four in Marion proper, then like two in West Marion and one in North Marion, something like that. So the West and North are probably more rural. So you probably have less clients, but more distance just because of the the number. Um, and I do, I, I brought with me this information just so I had it. Um, we, we have um, probably out of those seven routes, maybe three that are fully covered if I account for everybody. Um, so that means four routes times 20 days a month, which is probably 80 volunteers that we're really looking for, um, that we are currently sending staff from Columbus up here to, to drive those routes. Yeah, so, I mean, it took us almost an hour to get here today. And so that's one of the reasons, and it's really tough coming from Columbus, right? To um, make a break into a community like Marion where everybody knows each other. And we don't wanna be that company from Columbus. We want to have a presence here, right? No, seriously, I, I, <laughs> you get it, right? Yeah, and so, um, you know, we're trying to do things like we have our own post office here, post office box here. So um, we're integrating the community. This is our second time within a month that we've been up here. We'd like to get up here a little bit more and learn the community, meet our um, Marissa here is the volunteer manager that oversees Marion County. So I'm um, bringing her up here and having her put some phrases to the names and you know, working with individuals directly kind of just helps strengthen that bond to know and the stats that I provided you earlier about kind of how we're serving Marion and how we're doing it, just to show that you know we are supporting the community as well, even if it's not the one that we personally live in. What other questions? You still have to go through a training to go over the Amazon What do you do in the training? Yep. So um, we have um, a team. So it's me, Marissa, another lady, Stephanie. Um, that we are the core volunteer group. Um, we can do training in a couple of different ways. It used to be only we would come to you and we would give you a formal training or you would come to our place and we'd give you a formal training about an hour, show you how to deliver meals. Um, we have been migrating to Zoom over COVID to make it easier. Um, and we also provided a video. We taped the video. It's about nine minutes in length that we have provided. And it's a just in time, it gives you everything that you really need to know to feel comfortable. Um, so that if, for example, if a company has 20 people that are coming to volunteer and we do a Zoom, but only two of them couldn't show up, they can watch the video afterwards or we can provide it again afterwards. So yes, we will provide teams training on how to deliver Meals on Meals um, if that is something that groups are interested in doing. Um, I mean, I'll talk a little bit and 
I have another video here. I'll leave that to the end if we wanted to watch it. This is a video that was um, recorded by United Way of Logan County. And um, they shadowed one of our corporate teams that went and delivered meals. And so some interviews with the church um, who owns a route out there and some of the clients is pretty interesting. But I wanted to kind of, since we're talking about this, talk about our corporate volunteer programs that, um, you know, we can do training. And then in terms of delivering routes and your, um, not responsibility, but like how often your frequency, right? You don't have to adopt a route every single day and have 20 volunteers on staff. If you can deliver one day a week, if you can deliver one day a month, we would love that. We were trying to do one day a week. Yep. Yeah. And so Sika used to be a really good partner with us. And not to say that you're not a good partner. I didn't mean it to come out that way at all. Sorry. But, you know, COVID. Um, yeah. Right, exactly. And Nationwide wasn't allowed. They used to deliver three routes daily for yeah. us, and then they canceled that. So yeah. um, it's just certain companies have regulations and rules, and we absolutely understand that, which is why we turn more to individuals. But now, hopefully, as uh, rules are kind of relaxing and people can get back more out into the workforce, um, how can we get... Um, people out there to kind of help. So, but yeah, so frequency um, is totally up to the company and we will accept anything you want. So companies usually have a, a group of volunteers. Um, they'll often pair them up together for that camaraderie, um, but that's not a requirement from us. That's more the, the company side of things. And then depending on the number of volunteers that they have interested in their company, will help drive how many days a month that they'd like to volunteer. <clears throat> What other questions you have? I don't know if anybody on Zoom has questions. I don't want to, uh, Ms. Bear. Um, for those that are, I guess, in direct contact with, with seniors that are vaccine requirements or anything like that? We don't have vaccine requirements. Um, we have gone, th at the very beginning, it was strict no contact, um, strict wearing masks, strict um, uh, hand sanitizer, all that sort of stuff. Um, through the last, since probably like July of last year, a lot of that um, kind of went away. So we, our funders require us to get signatures from all the clients saying that, yes, they were the ones getting the meal to make sure that we are not delivering it to just some random person just because we didn't feel like driving for two miles, right? Um, and that was put on hold during COVID because of the whole swapping of pens and things, but that came back probably July of this year, I think. Um, so we are requiring signatures again, which is still a cause of concern for some people. They don't want to get so close to people. And we still encourage masks. Um, we have requested our clients wear masks as well, but we can't force anybody to do that. So it's more of a request and a general suggestion at the point, but no uh, vaccine requirements. Can you run me through a timeline from the to Okay. So the question was, can you run me through the timeline of if a company decides to say give five volunteers, what does that look like? So um, we would probably have you work with Marissa and um, we would schedule a time um, that would work for you to say, how do we get the volunteers trained? And it would be educating them on our whole Meals on Meals program, what we do, the types of meals, um, how you deliver it, how you read your route sheet, how you get that. So that training would be an hour. Um, getting it scheduled would be driven by your company. So if you have your five volunteers and you can all get you in next week, great. But it may be a couple weeks that we can get that scheduled. And then our turnaround on our side, we can do it as quickly as you want. So if you're ready and have five volunteers that we can train tomorrow and then get you started on Friday, we'll do that. Um, because we will have, especially here in Marion County, because we have so much availability in terms of our routes, um, we can find a route for you any single day of the week. Um, and we have at times um, made changes to the sizes of the routes. Um, I don't know how much flexibility we have right now in Marion County, just because we have so much opening. But as we get more volunteers on, if we find a route is too large, we, come, we try and keep it between an hour, an hour and a half. Our preference for company volunteers would be an hour. So it's kind of like as their lunch hour. Even though here in Marion, you start at 10, um, 10 to 11 can be somebody's replacement lunch hour versus 11 to 12 or 12 to 1. Um, so we try and do that. I, I think our routes are more like an hour and a half at the moment. But as we can get more volunteers, that will kind of spread the wealth a little bit. And we can 
reduce the sizes. Those types of flexible um, So because the our meals are, we have hot meals and cold meals. And so the hot meals are cooked that morning up to a temperature of, I think like 160 and we have to keep it roughly 140. Um, and we have to do temperature checks to make sure that we're keeping up with our standards. So the pickup time at 10, 10, 15, maybe, right? But um, 11 o'clock, probably not, right? So we have to kind of keep it within there to make sure that when we're delivering the hot meals, they are hot. What about and so we have um, the cold meals. Um, so when we deliver meals, you're going to have a, a hot meal bag and a cold meal bag that has some um, juices and notes and everything. And when you're delivering a client, you're delivering both. So you may deliver someone a hot meal. The next person you may deliver them a cold. The next one may get a hot and a cold. So it's not like a hot route and a cold route. They're all together. Ten o'clock Monday through Friday. Ten o'clock Monday through Friday. Correct. Yep. Um, other things. So I talked a little bit about our kitchen, our groceries to go pantry, things like that. If you guys want, and I know we're an hour away, which makes this really difficult. But if you guys ever want to come down and do a group volunteer event, we would love to have you. Um, you guys can come work in our kitchen for a couple of hours. You can come help stock our pantry um, and get groceries ready for some of the, the cancer clinics. Um, we always have big groups. We have a, a group from the Ohio State football team is coming um, next Wednesday um, to volunteer to help. Uh, so it's, we're, we're pretty flexible like that. Yeah, lose, no. Oh. No. Oh, no. Crush my heart. <laughs> no, this is a way better about themselves. So, yeah. They're volunteering before the game. Yes. Yeah, so they're volunteering. No, no, volunteering before Michigan. Yeah. The, yeah, yes. they'll play. Michigan State. Huge yeah, difference. Yeah. Little yeah. 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 brother. Yeah. We beat them. Yeah. 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 One time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, what are the questions? So, here, another few minutes left. So, I, I won't go through that other video. Um, it's on like the a, right. uh, yeah, it's on there. Um, it's about a minute and a half. Um, it's more of their promo video that they were trying to um, get focus on United Way and some of their United Way partners but it does give some good insight into the benefits from the company that's delivering, as well as the benefits that the volunteers get from the partner. So it was, it was pretty cool. And plus I'm in it, so. <laughs> hey, I have one question. Uh, so we were going to start doing this. I was gonna get more involved with CICA right before the pandemic hit. Um, as far as like the training, do you care for more like Absolutely. If you had members from your church that were interested sure and didn't want to do their house. own, <laughs> right? Right? They could come to this training and then they are trained and they don't have to be part of your SICA yeah. train, but they could go adopt their own route if they wanted to. Yep. Yep. And so our some of our internal processes, we've just streamlined our volunteer application. So now it's only one form that you have to submit rather than like three or four different forms. You have to go back to, uh, does Marion have to do support? No, okay. So it is only one form. So it's a pretty easy intake process, maybe five minutes on your side, uploading driver's license and insurance card. So, and in your packets, um, I have given you um, a copy of our annual report. This gives you a little bit more information about what we are. And then a couple of pamphlets more about um, volunteering and how to um, corporate routes, um, a little bit of a page about our programs and services, and then also a page about how to become a client. So if you happen to know anybody that needs services, um, there's some information in there that you can share because that's, you know, for the Zoom phone. Yeah, so I have sent those to Kelly so that she can email it. The only thing is our, our annual report is last year's annual report because this year isn't uh, digitized yet. But so we'll, yeah. same general information. We'll share that with you. Mm -hmm. It's on our website. It's on our website. You can go to lakecarolina.org. There is a volunteer form. It's all my volunteer forms there. Or I can help you. They can print it out. So it's great. You can spell it out online. Just go out and once you submit, you know the part. Okay. Yeah. So for the 
of those online that might not have heard more so our volunteer applications on our website, lifecarealliance.org. And there's going to be a white button that says volunteer. You push that. There'll be a link for our volunteer application, and it's all online. You fill it there. You upload your driver's license and insurance, and your auto insurance, I should say. Um, we have gotten some homeowners insurance. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then you'll be good to go. And then we'll get it and process it from our side. Well, Claire, uh, Marissa, thank you. And, and uh, I'm hey, so babe. sorry. Uh, Ebe. Ebe, Ebe. Uh, thank you so much for presenting today and thank you for those that are watching the recording and those on zoom and uh, we will see everyone I believe it's the second Friday in December sorry uh, Wednesday December is our next day to our council meeting but everyone have a safe and happy Thanksgiving thank you very much thanks for having me